Hey everyone! So a little while ago I did a video about how I mic my flute for loud live performances and I saw that one was doing pretty good compared to my covers and originals so I figured I might as well go ahead and make a video about how I record studio quality flute stems at home. So full disclaimer though first, I'm not an audio engineer so don't kill me if any of this doesn't you know jive in the audio engineering realm because I'm a environmental, civil, and industrial engineer actually. But a lot of these things that I'm going to show you I've been doing for quite a while and then a lot of things I've added on through the advice of an audio engineer. And this video might get a little long, I'm gonna try and keep it short, but um, I'll put putting timestamps somewhere um, so you can jump to whichever section is relevant for you. Now again, this is just how I personally recorded my flute for all my singles and my album. So this some things might work for you and some things might not, and hopefully this inspires you to, you know, pick and choose and get the best quality stem that you can at your house. So first off, we're going to start with a general setup. So you can see I have a portable isolation booth, I've got a table with a laptop and the audio interface, a microphone and a stand, the isolation shield, um, I have carpet down on the floor, very, very important. Um, we got the mic stand, we got cables and headphones and a music stand. And also your tuner, you definitely need a tuner. First piece of equipment I'm going to show you is the big elephant in the room behind me, which is the portable isolation booth. Um, oh, also, by the way, I'm not sponsored by anybody for any of these products. I kind of wish I was, but that's okay. So I'm not like getting any reimbursement or anything for telling you about these products. So I got this personal isolation booth from GIK Acoustics on their website, which I will link somewhere. Um, it is fantastic because my house is very tall ceilings, very vaulted and echoey. It is so echoey. And what's really important in your studio quality stems is that there's like no reverb, no extra echo or anything like that. So that when you're adding, mixing it in, it doesn't have any of this extra interference. So this was, is a quite a, <laughs> it's quite a tall structure. It goes from the floor to, to here. And it just really absorbs a lot of the sound coming like from my flute this way. And as well as in my microphone here, I have a vocal shield from Neewer. So those two together kind of help isolate the microphone from any of the sound that'll be hitting the walls and coming back to the microphone. So you just want to eliminate that um, the bounce as much as possible. And if you were to either pick this, the portable isolation booth or the shield, if you could only pick one, I mean, I would probably go with this, but if you're on a tighter budget, cause this was quite a bit of money, Go for the vocal shield, even though it is small, I do find that it makes a bit of a difference, especially with a condenser microphone. So this is the shield that I keep pointing to off camera, <laughs> is definitely a good value at least to start with. Because one of the things that I really started with was this microphone and the vocal shield. Those were my two primary, like when I first started out. So I think they're very important to have. And then of course, as you progress or you need a higher quality, sound, invest in a portable isolation booth. Or you can just really dampen the room as much as possible. And the reason why I record in my bedroom over any other place in the house is because it's a pretty sizable room. On um, the bed, of course, absorbs quite a bit of sound and it's just generally a lot quieter because if you get too small of a room, the sound will come back to your microphone and then you'll still hear that. And this is a pretty decent size. So, you know, it just works. <laughs> I use an MXL 990. This is a condenser microphone. I'm crouching down because I don't want to raise it up. <laughs> but, so I, this is a condenser microphone. Dynamics, I find, don't give you that same, you know, doesn't give you the right sound. Um, I've also used a, hold on. tried using the Shure SM57, which I believe I've used this once before in a studio, but I think this microphone worked better in a studio setting. And then this condenser mic worked out really well for me here at home. The only downside though, is that it picks up 
every single little noise. So if somebody's in the other room, you know, using the sink, whatever, you're gonna hear it. If you got a dishwasher or a dryer going, it's gonna pick it up. So that's like the only downside, at least to this particular microphone anyway. Even with all the sound treatments that I use, it still picks up everything. So yeah, get yourself. And I guess another important first step, if you were gonna do this cheaper, or like the bare minimum kind of thing. Good $100 microphone. See, this one is about $100. Um, anything cheaper might not work as well. And then if you were to go more expensive, it would be a significant price jump in order to get something that, you know, you actually hear a difference for what you're paying. So, I mean, this is the microphone that I've used for, um, like I said, my singles and Odyssey, the album. Well, and the song too, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, yeah, this is Old Faithful, I guess you could say. So the next topic is microphone placement. So this part of, you know, recording at home for the studio is the most important because it determines how you sound. And the one thing I cannot stand is my biggest pet peeve is having an airy flute tone. So when I'm playing, usually my airstream is going more towards my elbow. I place the microphone just slightly above that. Now I'm not too close to the microphone, only, I mean, this is about a pretty good distance for this, depending on the gain that you have on your audio interface. So it just about depends on how strong your microphone picks up the sound. So you don't want to be right on top of it because then you're going to like, really be blowing that airstream into the microphone, you're gonna get a lot of wind noise. So it's gonna sound fuzzy. And we don't want fuzzy flute tones. <laughs> so keeping the microphone more towards the direction of the sound works well, but not in the direction of your airflow. Now, alternatively, you could mic it from above, which I've done that before as well. However, you won't be able to use the microphone isolation shield from above. I mean, I guess you could, but I don't think it would work very well. Haven't tried it, <laughs> don't think I would either. But, like I was saying, so microphone out of the Airstream and mounted this way on, I use a boom stand, you could probably use any type of stand, but a boom stand allows me the opportunity to mic it from above or move it however I need to. Oh, and one more thing to add about microphone placement is that it's probably going to change for you every single time you record. Because as you can see, I'm like in my room, so, I'm gonna tear this down every single time I go to record. I'm gonna set it back up. It never goes back the same way. I've tried measuring where I put everything and it's just like, why bother? Because it changes so frequently. So every little position, like you could change it just a little bit. If you don't like your tone in one position, just move it a little bit, move your angle, move yourself a little bit because that you can try all these different ways and to see if your tone gets better or worse, depending on where you put it. So it's, there's no one, you know, golden position to put the microphone. You just gotta try a bunch of different things and see what works. And the next topic, as you can see, is studio monitor headphones. These are so, so important to get sound, like closed back sound canceling headphones. You do not want your backing track picking up in your microphone. That's going to be not a good time for your, stu your studio when you bring your stems to them to mix in with everything else because then it's just going to really throw everything off. So for what I use is the Sennheiser HD 280 Pro. They're closed back. I don't think they were too much money, but they work great. They have a nice balance and I can't hear anything really from the outside when I'm playing, not even myself, which is kind of a bummer, but if you have a good audio interface, you can monitor it that way and then it won't matter. All right, and the next topic is the table setup or really just the interface and a laptop. So you're gonna definitely need these to record, of course, your stems. So here I use a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. It's pretty great. I think they have a new generation thought. Now this might be the second generation. So if you're just recording flute, you really only need 
about one input because you could use two microphones, um, but that brings into the issue of phase, like your microphones might be out of phase. And if you're not an audio engineer, it's, you're probably gonna be out of phase anyway. And your audio engineer could fix that, but I figured just usually just one is good, especially for from doing like metal flute. But if you're doing classical flute, you might want to just to capture that, you know, the tone quality of your flute. So like I mentioned, this is the Scarlet 2i2. It's got two, two ends and it has phantom power, which is what you're going to need to power your condenser microphone. And I just plug it right into my laptop here. And the software that I use, I'm not going to get into software at all. I, I hate recording software. It's not definitely anything that I'm very good at, but I do use Reaper because it hosts all everything that I need really. And it's really affordable. It doesn't bog down my machine any. And I'm quite happy with it. I've been using it, I used it for the whole album for all my stuff that's on, you know, streaming platforms and whatnot. So invest in a good Focusrite. You can usually get them used on eBay or Reverb or anything like that, Sam Ash. So audio interface is gonna be very important. Another important consideration is when you're exporting your stems for the studio. So when you're recording with a condenser mic, that's gonna be recorded in mono. So there's only gonna be, not stereo, so it's mono. You'll want to export those stems as raw, mono, wave, like what? Uh, 48K hertz, so 48,000 hertz, and 32-bit? 32-bit. Yeah. So those type of parameters are very important to get a good quality output sound. And I think though that the audio interface only records in 16 bit. So I just export it anyway in 32, just to make sure that everything's like the same, you know, bit rate. Because when I export a lot of the VST instruments, those are 32 bit output, like that's its natural output. So in order to keep everything else the same, I just, you know, export everything as 32-bit. All right, so we went through all the topics about the portable isolation booth, the microphone shield, microphone placement, the microphone itself, you know, headphones, interface, computer. Oh, and you know, of course you're gonna need microphone cables, but that, that should be obvious. But here are some general tips that I've kind of come across during all my recording sessions at home. So tip number one is silence. Make sure everything is quiet in your house. No pets, kids, other people, appliances, whatever. They gotta be quiet because if you're using a condenser microphone, it's going to pick up everything. The next important thing to have when you're recording is a tuner to make sure that you're in tune because you know, it's just good to be in tune. And yeah, you just, gotta be in tune. That's all there is to it. And a flute is one of the instruments that can always be in tune because you can roll in or out. So always keep that in mind. Um, the oh, that was loud. <laughs> uh, the next important thing is wearing comfortable clothes when you're recording. I mean, cause you're at home. You don't have to look presentable really. So just be comfortable and it'll, by you being comfortable, it'll come through in the recording that you're comf comfortable, confident, and relaxed. I mean, or if it's metal, you could not be relaxed. You know, <laughs> whatever. Um, another thing I find interesting is temperature. So the temperature of your house and of the environment that you're in is going to affect your intonation on the flute because if you're recording something, you're doing a take and you set it down, it cools down, so it gets cold, then it's gonna be out of tune and you're just gonna be fighting with intonation a lot. And I think I had that happen once when I was in the studio. It's just my flute kept getting out of tune between different takes uh, because of the temperature. So, you know, set your temperature however you like. Oh, and ceiling fan, that brings me to the next thing of ceiling fans, as you can see right there in the corner. I have a ceiling fan on because it's like a literally 100 degrees here in Florida today. So you're gonna definitely want that off. If you've ever played in a room with um, a fan going, you can hear that, you know, whoop, 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 whoop sound um, when you're playing and you don't want that picking up in the microphone. It's, you know, not really professional. Another thing you wanna have near you is water. Stay hydrated. Like I said, it's 100 degrees here in Florida, but you know, just in general, you're probably gonna get thirsty when you're uh, recording. And another thing that's important is a flute stand. 
So when you're not playing, you're gonna want to, you know, put your flute down. You don't want to lay it down on anything. You can see this this poor thing has seen a thing or two. It's, it's been around the block. I've had it since I was in beginner band. So you can get these just about anywhere. They're great. I have another one from like a Hercules stand that also holds my alto flute and a piccolo. No, well, I have a separate alto flute stand. And then the Hercules one, I've, I'll show a picture of it. So it's got a piccolo peg on it as well. So that's pretty convenient. And then most bring a travel one with you wherever you go. And most importantly is to have fun. You're recording at home. The best thing about recording at home is that you're not on a, usually not on a time limit and you can take unlimited amount of takes. So just have fun, don't stress it and you'll be sure to have a good quality recording. Hi, ho neighbor.